and welcome to my aesthetic basement. Including my grandma's old slides that I don't know what to do with, my duct tape dummy nightmare, these sad clown paintings that my mom said I shouldn't get rid of because they could be worth money. I don't care. And so many wigs. And of course, my ungodly amount of clothes that I was determined to sell, but instead just threw them in this giant bin, just let them fester. Source of instant stress whenever I think about it. So if you've been on YouTube for any amount of time, you have probably seen videos called thrift flips. People will take items that they thrifted and modify them to look either completely different or fit them better. I have always wanted to try my hand in doing that, but by the time I was finally feeling like I had somewhat the amount of skills needed, good old Rona hit, so. So instead of doing a sort of conventional thrift flip where I go to the store, I thought maybe we could work on this baby. It's my own personal thrift store. What is this Wonder Woman belt? And lasso of truth. You don't belong in here. <laughs> Silly. What's that car salesman meme? Can fit a lot of abandoned dreams in this baby. <laughs> so much fucking spaghetti in it. So since I've never done a thrift flip before, I'm not quite sure the process of how I'm going to do this, but I think it will look something like this. Sorting through this bad boy as much as I don't want to do that to find items that I think could be repurposed into something else. Looking at the patterns that I have and seeing what I can actually use. See, my problem with thrift flips is that I think a lot of times you see online, someone will take larger top, turn it into a cute little baby doll dress or a mini skirt or something like that. I think when it comes to thrift flips, obviously it's way easier to take an amount of fabric and then turn it into something more fitted and something that requires less fabric. But for me, I tend to like long skirts, long dresses, big sleeves. <laughs> and obviously I think part of the challenge also lies in not just completely tearing the piece of clothing apart and using it just as fabric. There are no rules here. It's purely so I can take something that I was gonna get rid of and don't ever wear and turn it into something that hopefully I will wear. <laughs> Recycling! <laughs> This video will probably scream pure chaos, and I haven't really thought anything fully through. This is kind of just a whim decision. So let's get started. It's gonna be so messy. Okay. <laughs> now when I get rid of clothes, a lot of times I will donate them, but this is my kind of to sell pile, and that is because a lot of this stuff is either just really new reproduction or um, old vintage items, which I probably should not be storing in a massive dumpster of clothing in my basement. But here we are. I probably will not choose any vintage items to repurpose. Feels a little naughty of me to take vintage item and chop it up. Let's do it. Modern vintage. Kind of cute. Put that in the maybe. Which hat? You don't belong here either. Bridesmaid dress that I wore once and probably will never wear again. Oh, Nelly. Wonder Woman bracer? Why? Get out of here. This I always thought was cute. We'll put you in the maybe. Whispering sweet nothings. Mm. Frilly details at the bottom. Huh? This could possibly make really cute poverty pants, maybe. How did I let it get to this point? <sighs> Normally for modifying thrifted items, I don't particularly, particularly, I don't particularly, particularly. I'm not a fan of when people go thrifting and just pick out a really extra large or XXL and modify it to be something smaller. Obviously that's probably the easiest thing to do because there is more fabric there to work with, but I just don't really think that's fair. Finding larger sizes can already be tough without people picking them up just to turn them into something else. But this I actually bought for thesis film. I bought it for one of the characters six years ago, and clearly I have not done anything with it. Rhinestone buttons on the back. Ugh. This will be a contender. This is comfy. 
I don't want to get out. My maybe pile is about six items right now and I'm gonna narrow that down to I think three. Oh, I didn't think that one through. So as far as patterns, behold. Highly organized pattern stash. Marie Kondo, I'm coming for your gig. A lot of these probably won't fit this because a lot of them are meant for massive amounts of fabric. I don't have that much yardage and I have to be really careful with how I repurpose things. Let's dig through. This journal pattern, the top half of this vintage pattern, some 1890 sleeves, and just the trouser section of this overalls pattern. Now for the clothing, I'm gonna go with this navy dress. And my plan is just to make it a little bit more dirndly looking and fit me a lot better. This green skirt, which I plan to make into hobbity trousers. And then this gingham skirt, which I plan to make into a gingham blouse of some sort with big sleeves. Okay, I did have to run to the store to get more batteries for my mic, so got a little pick-me-up. I don't know which one I want to start on first. I don't know if it would be best to just tackle the hardest one first. I think I'm going to start with gingham blouse that I want to make. Now, I'm kind of doing exactly what I said I didn't want to do, basically just using an existing skirt as fabric, whatever. I've had this for so long. I always liked how it reminded me of Dorothy. I kept justifying it to keep it. I just, I don't wear it. <laughs> Take the top half of this dress paired with a Victorian-esque sleeve. As far as the frilly bits, I think those will probably go kind of like this on the sleeve. I don't foresee this being very hard. I've never actually used this pattern before, so that could also affect it. But the only way we're going to find out is if we just start. Much like a normal sewing project, I'm just going to probably seam rip these edges so that way I can kind of have it laying flat and then go from there. Let's do that. Nothing given up with him. Look out, Harry Styles. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, back to work. So I cracked open that vintage pattern that I was planning to just use the top half, went through all of the pattern pieces, and could not find any of the shirt patterns. Wah, wah, wah. So I had to choose another pattern. Five minutes later. Okay, so I have this one. And this one's pretty simple. It is basically just a bodice back, bodice front, and the sleeves. But instead of having a closed front, I'm gonna try to do buttons down the center. And to do this, I'm taking the front bodice piece that you would normally put on a fold and just giving it a little extra room for buttons. I started taking a look at these 1890 sleeves and quickly realized that you need a heck ton of fabric for these. Uh, so I decided to go with the sleeve pattern that came with the one that I'm already using. And this was a little bit of a struggle to try to find enough fabric for this, because whenever you have gathered sleeves, it always takes a lot of fabric, and I did not have that much for this. But I somehow made it work very, very tight. Day two. We got a lot of work to do today. I'm prepared because... <laughs> Nothing says I'm here to get shit done like overalls. Changed my mind. As you saw yesterday, I left off with the blue gingham fabric being all cut out. Now I just have to start assembling that, which I don't foresee being too complicated, but that's not a phrase I like to say very often when I'm sewing because it almost always ends in a curse. The bodice front, which has extra room for buttons, hopefully. Bodice back, the two sleeves. This gingham is gonna be pointing in pretty much every direction ever. And then I did go ahead and separate the trim 
from the fabric. A lot of my bodices, you never actually see the bottom because I just tuck them in the skirts. So I did keep this, which is the waistband of the original skirt, button enclosure, and I think I might just use that. I might modify the neckline a little bit um, just because right now I'm pretty sure it comes up all the way to here. Maybe I can make it come down into like a little square situation. I just always think that's a little bit more flattering. And then we still have two other garments to work on today. I also wanted to take on making my first loaf of bread. Am I gonna be able to juggle everything that I need to do and do that at the same time? Yes, and you know why? Because I've done pretty much all the other stereotypical activities that you do during lockdown, so baking bread is, uh, Next on the list. You didn't take on a baking activity where you have no idea what you're doing. Was it even a pandemic? I tried being a plant lady. It's not going so well. Exhibit A. I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I overwatered it in a panic. According to my lovely plant folk on Instagram, they're suggesting to repot it. A bigger pot coming in the mail. So just hang on for one more day. You can. Right now it's just a beacon to any plant that I'm gonna bring home in the future. <laughs> okay. So first things first, sew the darts into the bodice front and the bodice back, and then we can start piecing this baby together. So to make the darts, I'm following the pattern and marking it off with a uh, tailor's pencil. Why did I say that's so weird? Uh, it's basically just gonna look like this. And then when you flip it over, it looks something like that. So those are the two front pieces and then I did the same thing on the one back piece. Here I thought it would be a great idea to modify the neckline by using the back piece. Uh, and you will see why this is not a good idea in the end. Do you ever have one of those days where you just literally knock over every single thing you touch? Well, folks, I would like to say that is all 28 years of my existence on this planet. <sighs> why am I like this? attached all the pieces of the bots together. Hard to see. There's a lot of blue going on here. I think I will cut down the neckline a little bit. It's also kind of tight. <laughs> Not in the Brooklyn Nine-Nine kind of way. I also have two layers on underneath this, so hopefully it'll be a little bit better. Cut down that neckline, try it on again, make sure that nothing is warbly. I've had that problem before where I kind of make up a neckline and it will bulge in certain places. And then I will probably add the waistband before I start adding on the sleeves. So long, pal, I'll see you again. I'm sort of doing like a uh, poor man's gathering method here where I'm just pinning the fabric to an elastic that I got from another piece of clothing. A little bit more of a messy way to do it, but it does save me time. It basically allows me to skip a step or two. Very hard to see, but I'm just attaching the sleeves to the bodice. Here is the blue top so far. I attached the sleeves and uh, it's looking pretty decent so far. I still have to put on the buttons and buttonholes, the facings. I think I'm gonna do that kind of stuff tonight off camera um, because it's kind of boring. Because we have two other things that I still need to make and I forget how dark it gets so early in this house. So, <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna put this aside for now and start on something else. And I think I wanna start on the skirt. <laughs>
this skirt. I want to make them into little hobbit trousers. Hello, good framing. Hello. It's already kind of got like the nice button up system, like so. And it's already got like really nice pleating. What I'm wondering is if I'm just able to straight up keep the skirt relatively the same, but just transform them into pants. I don't know that it's just as simple as making this kind of shape. So what I'm gonna do is open up the overalls pattern, take a look at the trousers part of it. Around the crotchal region, there is a little bit more work that I need to do, so. Being able to unbutton this fully is definitely gonna help. A little bit of this action, huh? I'm gonna look like a little gingerbread boy. See if we can't make these into pants. When I tell you this took literally all of my brain cells, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> but basically to break it down, what I did kind of looked like this, where it's almost like two pattern pieces just attached at the waistband, um, similar to what you would do for sewing a pair of trousers. So I cut right up the middle and then used this trousers pattern as sort of a guide where to uh, modify the crotchal region. So I did this on the two fronts and then in the back it was a little bit more pronounced. I then formed the two pant legs by attaching the fronts and the backs together, sewed those, and then all that was left to do was sew the crotch together, which again is kind of hard to see. Let me tell you, this was the hardest my brain has worked in a very long time. Okay, wait. These are actually super freaking cute. Huh? Look at, look at how cute. The butt is a, a little tight. I don't think you can tell that it's literally halfway up my ass. I was originally going to gather these so that it would look something like this. That's a tough decision. You all know. How much I love secret pants. Hmm. Dang it. Hmm. Let me like pin this and see. Hmm. This is very tough. I think I'm gonna leave it as secret pants for now. I can always go in and change it if I want to, but you know, if I make the modification to make them fitted trousers, then I, there's no coming back from that, so. Okay, decision is made. One massive wedgie later. Okay, so Nick was in a meeting, so I'm gonna have to do this telepathically. For the navy dress, I am, um, well, I'm gonna flip it around, thinking that this was the backside, but then kind of realizing that this is actually the front after looking at the darts. Oops. <laughs> so first thing I'm gonna do is separate the bodice from the skirt portion just so I can control the fitting a little bit easier. Tried that on. I'm just gonna exaggerate the darts that are already in place to make it fit a little bit better. And then modify the neckline a bit because you know I enjoy doing that apparently. And then I'm gonna replace the buttons. So after doing a little choppy choppy to the neckline, I am just going in and sewing a bit deeper into those darts. This part was kind of tricky, but reattaching the skirt, basically I just put right sides together and then tried to form the pleats as they were, which was a little bit easier because they kind of had a muscle memory of what they were um, before I took it apart, so that helped a little bit.
Ta-da! Generally, I will say I do like everything that I made, which is surprising because usually if I make two or three items, I'll like one and then the other, eh. But for the most part, I really liked all three items. That being said, there are obviously a lot more improvements I can make and a lot of things that I learned. I think it's probably good for me to start doing this kind of stuff because it really makes you focus on how things fit you and how things are constructed, especially if you are taking apart old items. Because that way you can kind of see how they were made and reverse engineer it. My sewing journey is a very long one and I'm still smack dab in the middle of it. My problem comes when it comes to finishing garments. Navy dress and the pants weren't as bad because those were kind of already finished for me. But this baby was basically made from scratch. In general, I really like it. I think the sleeves for once in my life came out kind of how I was thinking they would. But something I struggle with a lot with blouses is the neckline and kind of figuring out how to make it so it's not gaping anywhere or doing this because that's really freaking annoying. For this one, I kind of understand why it's doing that because I took the back piece and made it the front piece. I didn't really think about the fact that the back is kind of angled out more because your back is a flat surface. Kind of doing that here and it wants to just lie on the shoulders because of that. There is some wobbliness here. So that's something I didn't really think about. <laughs> I think I could probably just add a couple of small darts in here and that will fix it. Learning. <laughs> The navy dress, I think, came out pretty cute. The waist is not quite as long as I would like it to. It falls just a smidge above the smallest part of my waist. I had to take the bodice apart and reattach the skirt, so I lost like a quarter of an inch there. It's not a huge deal. I think when I add a belt on it, it, it's fine. I did not take into account that the actual dress itself is super uncomfortable material-wise. <laughs> Probably should have thought about that. 80s synthetic kind of material. Not great, something I will definitely think about next time. The trousers are cute. I think the reason I was giving the skirt up, which I kind of forgot about, was because the waist is very small and it's very tight. I don't really know how to wet out things quite yet, so I didn't bother doing that. That's about it. Part of sewing is that you just keep going, even though you make mistakes. Recycling. And also I made some bread. I don't know how it's gonna turn out because currently I'm making it. Editing Rachel, how'd it go? Hmm. That is it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my first thrift flip. I will definitely be doing more of these. <sighs> I love you guys whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every Friday and we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye! Dang it. <laughs> Why did I yank that away so aggressively? Ouch, okay. <laughs> oh, he's a fresh man. Dun -dun 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 -dun. <sighs> Why did that, that take so much breath out of me? <laughs> she thick.